Good morning, happy travelers. We are back at it again at a very gloomy LAX. Today, just a two day trip. We are heading to Dallas and then to Albuquerque. So it shouldn't be too bad. I woke up this morning not really feeling it though. So I'm struggling a little bit. I had some pumpkin coffee and put on my nice lipstick. So hopefully I can rev myself up for today. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just don't feel motivated to go to work, but I'm here. And as soon as I get on the plane and have to do all my safety checks and everything, I get distracted and don't think about it anymore, so it's fine. Bus is gonna come pick us up in just a couple minutes, so let's head to the terminal, shall we? Now heading down to the plane. Today, unusually, I am working in the aisle. This is my domain today. Normally, I like to work in the galleys just because there's less chaos I think working in the aisle all the time gets a little overstimulating for me and it's very exhausting someone once accused me of being lazy and not wanting to do customer service I didn't want to do customer service I definitely should not be in this job but for one trip it'll be fine the flights aren't that long and I'm gonna make it a good trip made it to Dallas and we don't have very much time at all so I didn't do anything or get any food might have a little snacky on the plane. 15 minutes until boarding. Then we head to Albuquerque and I think it's like a, an hour and 20 minute flight or something. Maybe like 16 hours in Albuquerque or something. Good time to rest. Hello, I have made it to my hotel in Albuquerque. I've already done my murderer check, so I am not going to do that today. I know it's funny and I make it a joke and you guys find it amusing, which it is. Um, I actually do a real murderer check before I film it usually, but it is a real thing that flight attendants do. And a flight attendant was just found dead in her hotel room last week. So it is really something that, you know, we do for our safety. It's not just a joke as I make it out to be. And they are actually treating that flight attendant's death as a homicide. It was a flight attendant from my airline and it has really hit us all hard. I think those of us who don't pay much attention to safety will be paying a lot better attention now. It's, it's a serious thing. Safety for flight attendants in general and just for women on their own is a very important thing. And if you're staying in a hotel room by yourself, I encourage you to do your own murder check because you never know. But uh, it was a relatively uneventful day, which is good. Tomorrow's going to be longer because we go back through Chicago, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. And I have about, let's see, I guess it's more like 15 hours here now. I don't think I'm gonna go out and do anything. Our pickup is at 12.30 tomorrow, so I don't have a ton of time. I'll probably just hang out in my room tonight, maybe go to the gym. Definitely need to take a shower. That's one thing for sure, and eat some dinner. Got my little crock pot. No microwave in this room. I always appreciate a microwave, but didn't get one today. All right, I got my little crock pot. Crock potting. There it is. It's all messed up because I use it all the time. I've had it for a long time. I think I should give her a name. What do you think I should name my tiny crock pot? So I thought I would talk a little bit about airline and flight attendant stuff. Okay, so I've gotten a couple questions about uh, the airline safety rules and what those are all about. And when I say I got a couple questions, what I mean is absolutely no one asked about this, but I decided it was a topic I wanted to talk about anyway. <laughs> it is actually something as a flight attendant I get a lot of pushback about on the plane when I'm telling people to do certain things that are safety related, but they may not seem safety related when flight attendants are giving their instructions and you have to follow them. I'm going to tell you why. Sometimes I feel like passengers give me attitude because they feel like I'm just on a power trip trying to tell them what to do, which is not the case. I don't want to have to tell people to do anything because a lot of the times I get attitude <laughs> which stinks because I'm just trying to do my job. Most of these things that we tell you to do, such as put your bag under the seat or fasten your seatbelt or, you know, that kind of thing, they are actually federal aviation regulations, which means that we are required by law to do them. And if we don't do them and an FAA person sees that, we actually can get a huge, huge fine. So it's not just we're on a power trip. We at least have to tell you to do it and try to enforce it as much as possible. So I'm going to explain why you have to do some of these things and why we're telling you to do some of these things. And first of all, I'll start with the seatbelts. Now, it may seem obvious, you wear a seatbelt in the car, you wear your seatbelt on the plane. 
So we say this, but it actually is pretty important to keep your seatbelt on for the whole flight, unless you need to get up or go to the bathroom or whatever. So you're gonna wanna keep your seatbelt fastened whenever you're in your seat, even on the ground. And that's because just like in a car, planes can actually crash into other planes while they're taxiing on the ground or crash into other things like all the vehicles that are on the taxiway or really anything else. This has actually happened a lot of times, especially recently, like Google it. And when a plane crashes into something, it's a huge thing and it's gonna make a big movement and you definitely wanna have your seatbelt fastened so you're not thrown about the cabin. And when you're in the air, turbulence can happen at any second during the flight. Sometimes the pilots know it's coming, sometimes they don't. And if you hit a, an air pocket and you just drop, you're gonna come flying out of your seat if you don't have your seatbelt on. So it's really important to keep that fastened and we are required to show you how to fasten it before every flight. I know it's probably second nature to a lot of people, but we have to do the, you know, fasten your seatbelt and pull the thing and show you how to do it. So another thing you may know if you travel a lot is that you have to have your bags underneath the seat in front of you, your seat backs up and your tray tables up. A lot of the other safety things have to do with getting you off the plane, evacuating you as quickly as possible if an emergency happens. So the most dangerous parts of flight are takeoff and landing actually. So that's when you need to have your seat backs, your tray tables up, your seat belts on, all that stuff. That's when accidents are very serious because the planes are going so fast and you're still on the ground or you're getting to be on the ground. You could hit something, something could go wrong with your landing gear, your hydraulics, whatever. And obviously when you evacuate, you're going to be on the ground. So the idea behind those safety rules is that they wanna be able to get you off the plane as fast as possible. They don't want you tripping over any bags that are in the aisle or at your feet, which is why you have to put them all the way under the seat in front of you. They don't want you to be slowed down by a tray table that's down or slowed down by any seats that are back. They're thinking that every second counts. Imagine with all those people on the plane trying to get off the plane as fast as possible with everyone around you, it would be really, really hard. And if the plane is literally on fire and you're running for your life, those extra seconds are gonna count. So if anyone tells you to put your seat back up and your tray table up, that's why. The FAA is trying to save you those precious, precious moments if anything does happen, which hopefully it won't ever happen, but you never know. You don't wanna learn on the off chance that you are in an emergency like that. Oh, also as a side note, if you are ever in an emergency and you have to evacuate a plane, please do not, do not take your bags. Please, please, please do not ever take your bags. All those seconds that you're saving by not having the trade tables down and your seats back, you will absolutely lose those by trying to take your bags and you'll be endangering other people. I don't wanna see that because I have to get off the plane last. The flight attendants have to make sure that everyone is safely off the plane and take any injured people off. I have to be the last one on the plane. So if you're grabbing your bags and taking those seconds away from me, I'm not gonna be very happy. So please don't ever do that. God forbid we're ever in any of those situations but in that case, please don't do it. It's the same thing when you're sitting at a bulkhead, when you have a seat and just a wall in front of you, no seats. So you don't have that seat in front of you to put your stuff under. That's why all of your bags have to go in the overhead bin. It's to clear that aisle way so you don't have anything to trip over in case you have to evacuate the plane. Those seats usually have a little bit more leg room, but having to put all of your stuff up is a little bit of a pain, but that's why you have to do it, just so you know. As for why they make you put away large electronics, such as your laptops or huge tablets, it depends on the flight attendants you get as to how lenient they are about this, because tablets are a little bit of a gray area. But basically, if you're landing or you're taking off or you're on the ground or whatever and you hit something, the airlines and the FAA don't want giant heavy electronic projectiles going through the air. So the reason you have to put your laptops in such a way is because they literally don't want laptops flying everywhere in the case that there's an accident, which is appreciated, I think. I wouldn't want to get hit in the head with a laptop. That would suck. And some important safety rules that you really should know that you probably don't pay attention to during the safety demonstration are knowing where your nearest exits are, that if you ever have to do a water evacuation and have to put your life vest on, do not inflate your life vest inside the plane. You will not get off the plane. It's very, very important. Like I said, don't take your bags. Oh, another thing you should know, if the masks ever drop and you need to put those on, put it over your nose and mouth. Because I've seen videos of people who just put it on their mouth and I'm just like, no. <laughs> 
those are all the things that I have written down in my little notes here that I thought I would explain because when I am trying to get people to do those things on the airplane, a lot of people don't seem to understand that A, I'm doing my job, B, if I see a seat back or a tray table down, I will get a big fine if I get caught and see like it really is for your safety like if the one in 10 million chance that something happens you want to be able to save your own life and also not hinder your neighbors from saving their own lives as well so if you have any other questions about safety related stuff let me know I will answer them in the comments and hopefully this was interesting for you guys I know it's kind of a random topic but I figured I would talk about something a little bit different this time since it's basically go to LAX fly out of LAX have a quick layover, then go to my hotel room. I'm trying to do something a little different for you. Also, if you have any video ideas, let me know. I'm always open to suggestions. But now I'm going to get out of this uniform because I've been in it for a lot of hours, so. Since my vlogs are getting a little bit repetitive, I thought I would give you Okay, so it's cut off. This is really terrible. It's really terrible. Sorry, guys. And imagine with all those people on those. Oh my God. Bleh.